Today we're going to be covering the simple, universal and aggressive opening that you can use as white. I'm Grandmaster Igor Smirnov, let's rock and roll. I'm talking about the first move knight to c3, which is guaranteed to take your opponents by surprise. They know nothing about this opening at all, and the beauty is that you play basically the same moves over and over again. Now, against knight to c3, your pawns will usually push one of their central pawns forward, either e5 or d5. We'll talk about both of these options, but d5 actually seems more challenging as not only they develop potentially their pieces and occupy the center, but they're also ready to push it forward and to attack your knight. What are you going to do then? Well, then you play pawn to e4 and you counter strike in the center. By the way, another upside of this opening, as you can see, is that you can use it against the Scandinavian defense, right? So if I just revert it back, let's say you played the first move pawn e4 and your opponent responds with the Scandinavian, you may go knight to c3 and he transposes it into the same stuff. All right, now let's move on to our main line. Black could either capture or push forward d4. Now, going forward with pawn to d4 and attacking the knight certainly seems a lot more challenging for white and more aggressive for black, so that's going to be the main line that we are going to be discussing. If black simply recaptures on e4, you just retake, and we've got a more or less symmetric position with your centralized knight, which gives you a minor upper hand. So here, you've got no issues at all, you're going to develop naturally by d4, knight of 3, all the standard stuff, you've got a good position. Now, instead, if black pushes the pawn forward with pawn to d4, it looks like they somewhat confuse used you, you have to drop it back, looks like your pieces are awkward and black gained some space advantage, looks like it's all very advantageous for black. But here's the fun part, it's a lot trickier than it seems, plus not only in the main line you win, but in the second most common move by black, you also win, it's hard to believe, but in both of these main lines, you win within the next 5 moves. I understand that it may sound too good to be true, so let's check the stats. Here in the lower right corner you can see the stats. Now, the top move, the most common move, is at the top. We can see that black here plays pawn e4, we move the knight back, now the most common move by black is pawn e5, and now we reroute the knight to the king side, which opens up the bishop, plus our knight here stands actively always ready to jump forward and to join our potential future attack. Now, black in most cases goes pawn to c5, you go knight to f3, which attacks this pawn on e5, therefore they defend it by going knight to c6. Now, in this position, you do want to bring your bishop out either to c4 or to b5 to an active square. Bishop c4 is the most aggressive and it takes aim at this pawn, which is a doorway to your opponent's king. Now, here's the fun part. You can see that the most common move by black is the move knight f6, which closes the game on the spot. And it's a rare case where such a natural move is actually a big blunder. Here's the deal. You can go here knight to g5, you team up against this pawn on f7, and you're ready to capture it either by the bishop and go after the king, or you can capture it by the knight, which will fork the queen and the rook. And black has no sufficient defense to this pawn. I mean, the best thing they can do is to go bishop e6, but after that you exchange, you win the pawn, now you're a pawn up, plus this bishop is extremely active, it's gonna be difficult for black to ever castle in this game, you're gonna play d3, castle, pawn f4, knight f5, just very simple attacking moves, if I turn on stockfish, it's gonna probably tell us that you have quite a big advantage, it shows plus one, but I think that in reality, it's just much easier to play this position as white, and you see that the stats are very much in white's favor, the vast majority of the games are won by white. And now it gets even better. We know that the first most common move of black, knight of 6, is losing to your move knight to g5 and they have no sufficient defense. Now, how about the second most common move of black? It's the move bishop to d6. Now, you play your standard move pawn d3, which makes your bishop involved into the game. And now, just look at this, the most common move is knight to e7, which loses once again to the very same move knight to g5. The following variation is slightly different, but overall it's even better for you. Alright, so you are attacking their f7 pawn twice, and the only normal way for them to defend it would be to castle. It looks like it's good for black so far, they have successfully defended this pawn, but now you add more fire to your attack by going queen to h5. And from here, it just overwhelms black with all these threats against their pawn and king and their casting altogether. Now, queen takes h7 is the first and most important threat that they need to parry, so they go pawn h6, but now knight takes f7 leads to a complete devastation of black. We attack the queen, as well as many other things around, plus we've got this monstrous bishop on c4 that acts to raise the king. Therefore, whenever you move the knight, it's gonna be checked to their king. So they have to give up the rook, now queen takes, still check to the king, and after king goes to h7, not only you grab material, but you continue your attack. I mean, knight h5 is a very common move to target this pawn on g7, and it is a very good move for white. 
Even stronger in this case is bishop takes h6, just with a complete destruction. So they can't take it with a pawn because it's pinned. Queen takes g7 as a major threat, and if the king takes, now our queen goes back to h5 and it's a checkmate in one. That covers the move pawn to d5. How about the other common move, pawn to e5? What do you do here? Well, of course, you could just play pawn to e4, which would transpose it into the Vienna game or the bishop's opening, some standard opening, and that's perfectly fine. However, you can also play it in a more unique style. Then you play knight f3 first, hitting this pawn. Notice that black can't move the pawn forward, because you control the square, you'll simply capture it. Therefore, black needs to defend it somehow. As they defend it, you then strike in the center with pawn to d4, adding more pressure. Like, still can't move it forward, you control the square, so you have to trade, knight recaptures. And now we have a more unique position, and even if you don't know much about it, first of all, you will get to know how to play it within a couple next minutes. Secondly, let's not forget that your opponent knows nothing about this position at all, so you're never in danger. Now, after your opponent goes knight f6, there is also a quite a fun way for you to seize the advantage. You go bishop g5, pin in the knight, and tempt in black to play the standard move bishop e7. And although it's standard in other positions, in this case it actually allows your knight to jump forward to f5 and all of a sudden you put pressure against the bishop as well as this pawn on g7 and it becomes pretty bad for black really quick. Let's say your pawn castles, now you take on e7, queen recaptures and now thanks to this pin we've got to move knight to d5. And that is really really annoying, you attack the queen put more pressure to the knight, you attack this pawn on c7, plus your bishop is adding more pressure to all these diagonal. And if the queen moves somewhere, you then trade on f6, check to the king, and after this exchange, you opened up the king, you ruined his pawn structure. In this case, you could also trade queens here, which you know makes it obvious that your opponent missed the class on pawn structures, because they really achieved the worst position ever in terms of their pawn structure. Plus, you can pick up the pawn right here and win it, and this gives you a completely winning endgame, these pawns are weak, you're gonna castle queenside and pick up this pawn and it's just completely winning. Alright, now let's go over this variation once again. Your pawn has just played pawn e5, you attack this pawn right away. As your opponent defends it somehow, either by pawn or knight, doesn't matter, you strike in the center with pawn to d4. Now, after this exchange, it's actually the most common for black to just trade on d4. Why? Because they're not the part of the Igor nation and they don't know that to take is a mistake. When they do so, they help you to become more active and to get a completely superior position. If you just look at the position overall, you see that the pawn structure is more or less symmetric, but you are way more active and your position is superior. Now, after knight to f6, you can just develop in the most you know, casual way possible, bishop g5, let's say, put in pressure here, and then you can castle queen side. You let's say your opponent does the same, then you push in the center with e4, threatening to go e5, and you can see that you have this very simple position to play. You can actually play any normal moves, and your opponent is completely passive. Or you can go into the all out attack with e5 straight away, and in most cases, it's gonna pay off, because after this trade, now all of a sudden your rook attacks the opponent's queen. And if the queen tries to hide away, then you can gobble up this pawn on c7. After a pawn plays whatever, move h6, bishop b6, doesn't matter. There is also bishop b5. Now, the standard development move for white, you play the move which white often plays in the rule opus, but in this case, it wins the game on the spot, because you hit the queen, and if the queen moves anywhere, then this bishop on e7 drops, you can pick it up, and you just have a superior position, material advantage, and hopefully you're gonna win from here. Now you know how to play this opening as white and it could become a universal opening that you play in many or even all the games that you play. On top of that, recently I recorded a video on how you can use the very same opening system as black and you can check it out right here so then you'll have a complete opening system that you can use either as white or as black in any game that you play and you're prepared all around. Keep crushing it and I'll talk to you soon.